Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, nurse. I've come in answer to your advert on the wall next to the Eagle Laundry in Pelham Road. An advert? Pelham Road? Yes, your poster. You must have seen it. There's a nurse pointing at you, a Red Cross lady, actually, I believe, with a moustache and a beard. Hmm? <laughs> well, a pencil's in, of course. You must know it. It's one of yours. It's next to Chamberlain Must Go, just above the cricket stumps. <laughs> it says your blood can save a life. Oh, I see. You wish to become a blood donor. I certainly do. I've been thinking about this for a long time. No man is an island, young lady. To do one unselfish act with no thought of profit or gain is the duty of every human being. Something for the benefit of the country as a whole. What should it be, I thought? Become a blood donor or join the young conservatives? <laughs> But as I'm not looking for a wife and I can't play table tennis, here I am. <laughs> a body full of good British blood and raring to go. Yes, quite. Well, now, would you sit down and I'll just take a few particulars. May I have your name? Yes, uh, Hancock, Anthony Hancock. Twice candidate for the county council elections, defeated. <laughs> Honsec, British Legion, Earl's Court branch, treasurer of the darts team and the outings committee. Yes, I, I only want the Yeah, well, name. we're going to market this year by boat. If there's any young nurses like yourself... <laughs> Any young nurses like yourself who'd care to join us, we'd be more than happy to accommodate you. No funny business, you know. I mean, it'll be up, up, up and up. I'll bear it in mind. Yes. Now, uh, date of birth? Uh, yes. Yes, shall we say the uh, 12th of May, 19... Uh, I always remember the 12th of May. <laughs> it's Coronation Day, you know, 1936. You're only 25. No, 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 the coronation was in 1936. I... <laughs> I was born a little before that in 19... Uh, is all this really necessary? Yes. Yes, I'm afraid so. The 12th of May. Yes, I always remember that. The coronation. We all got a day off at our school, did you? Oh. And we got a cup and a saucer in a box and a bar of soap. Very good. I've still got that. And a spoon for the Silver Jubilee and a biscuit tin with their pictures on. How old are you? 35. Thank you. <laughs> Nationality? Ah, you've got nothing to worry about there. <laughs> It's blood you're thinking about, isn't it? British. British. Undiluted for 12 generations. 100% Anglo-Saxon with perhaps just a dash of Viking. But nothing else has crept in. Now, anybody who gets any of this will have nothing to complain about. There's aristocracy in there, you know. You want to watch who you're giving it to. It's like motor oil. It doesn't mix, if you get my meaning. Mr. Hancock, when a blood transfusion is being given, the family background is of no consequence. Oh, come now. Surely you don't expect me to believe that. I mean, after all, East is East, And really. blood is blood, Mr Hancock, the world over. It is classified by groups and not by accidents of birth. I did not come here for a lecture on communism, young lady. <laughs> I happen to be a conservative. Then kindly behave like one, madam. Have you had any of the diseases on this list? Show me. How dare you. <laughs> No, I have not. And especially that one. <laughs> I've told you before, you've nothing to fear from me. I am perfectly healthy. Fit! Fit! If we'd had our own rocket, I'd have been the first one up there. I had me named down for the blue streak, but no, we missed our chance again. It's not right having these foreigners hurtling round up there. You mark my words. Blood, I... Mr Hancock, blood. Hmm? Yes. Ah, yes. I beg your pardon, I do get carried away over things like that. It's a sore point with me. Are we ready now, then? Well, there is just one more thing. Have you given any blood before? Given no. Spilt, yes. Oh. <laughs> yes, there's a good few drops lying about on the battlefields of Europe. Are you familiar with the Ardennes? I well remember von Rundstedt's last push. Tiger Harrison and myself, being in a forward position, were cut off behind the enemy lines. <laughs> Captain Harrison, I said. Yes, sir, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry's overlooked us, I said. Where shall we head for? Berlin, he said. Right, I said. Last one in the Reichstag's a sissy, so we set off. <laughs> we got there three days before the Russians. You've I'm never go been the a vodka. blood donor before? No, yes. Well, so, there we were, surrounded by stormtroopers. <laughs> Kamerad, Kamerad, they said. If you'll just sit over there with the others, Doctor will call you when he's ready. Oh, thank you. Over here? Yes. Oh, excuse me, is this seat taken? Uh, uh, no, no. Do you mind if I sit here? No, no. Carry on. Excuse me, madam, do you mind if I sit here? No, no, of course not. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's a grand job we're all doing. <laughs> yes, I think we can all be proud of ourselves. 
Some people, all they do is take, take, take out of life and never put anything back. Well, that is not my way of living and never has been. <laughs> never has been. <laughs> You're only entitled to take out of life what you were prepared to put into it. <laughs> do we get a badge for doing this? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Pity, we should have something for people to pick us out by. It's not really important, is it? As long as we give the blood and help someone, that's the main thing. Oh, well, quite, quite. I mean, as long as they get their corpuscles, quite, quite. <laughs> it's a reward in itself, I agree. No names, no pack drill. Quite, quite. I just think we ought to get a badge as well. I mean, <laughs> I mean nothing grand. A little enameled thing. A little motto, that's all. Nothing pretentious. Something like, He gave it for others so that others may live. <laughs> You know, I mean, we are do-gooders. We should get something for it. What do you want, money? Don't be vulgar. <laughs> I am a great believer in charity. Help others, that's my motto. I contribute to every flag day that's going. The lapels of my suits are always the first thing to go. <laughs> Covered in holes, they are. Yes, I always give what I can. I don't give thousands because I don't earn thousands. I give according to my means. One must cut one's cloth according to one's pocket. In proportion, I give as much as Nuffield... Have a look at this. It's all in my diary. Congo Relief, two and six. <laughs> Self-denial week, one and eight. <laughs> Lifeboat day, sixpence. Arab refugees, one and two. Yes, it's all down here. Yes, yes, I, I do what I can. My conscience is clear. And when I'm finally called by the great architect <laughs> and he says, what did you do? I shall just bring me book out and I shall say, here you are, mate, add that lot up. <laughs> yes, I mean, I've got nothing to fear. No, I could go tomorrow. Yes, let's see, October 1961, gave blood for the needy. Whoa, how much do you reckon that's worth? Three quid? Just to get the book straight, you know. Just for my own benefit, I'm not trying to put a price on it. Do you come here often? This is my twelfth time. There's no need to boast about it, old man. <laughs> how much did you give to the Arab refugees? Oh, really? Oh, come on, come on, how much? Go on, you're shouting about how much blood you've given. How much did you give to the Arab refugees? If you must know, I gave five pounds. <laughs> oh, well, some people are better placed than others. I mean, <laughs> I would have given more, but I've got commitments. I can't afford to go around chucking fivers about all over the place. I have to send my mother 30 bob a week. No, let's forget all about it, shall we? Yes, well, all right. I find the whole thing most distasteful. All right, all right, all right. Oh, Mr Johnson, <laughs> doctor's ready for you now. You know the way, don't you? Yes, thank you. He's a bit of a big head, isn't he? Who? Him. Well, if you can't give to charity without shouting about it from the rooftops, well. <laughs> Is this your first time? I come here every six months for the last 12 years. Hmm. Yes, well, I mean, you've got a bit to spare, haven't you? I mean, <laughs> I mean, a person your size, you know, I mean, too much blood is as bad as too little, I always say. Are you trying to be offensive? No, 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 nothing personal, just an observation. I think it's very laudable to give so much. Of course, some people make it up quicker than others. I mean, I, I expect you're a big eater. I mean, it wouldn't take you long to recruit. You, you probably have a, you, a big breath. And you, you, I mean, you, 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 they've certainly brightened these hospitals up, haven't they? <laughs> Of course, it's the health service that's done that, you know. They spend more money on paint. Out of every 13 and 6 paid in, sixpence eight and he goes up on the wall. <laughs> well, it's worth it. I mean, once you've paid your £37.12 a year and your two bob an item and the first pound for your teeth and buy your own frames for your glasses, you can't grumble. Some countries haven't got a free health service. Well, Mrs Forsyth, doctor's ready for you now. Would you go in, please? Thank you. Best of luck. Just think Cliff Richard might get yours. <laughs> That'd slow him down a bit. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, well. <sighs> ah, yes. Hmm. <laughs> Very colourful, isn't it, isn't it, really? Nothing like a room full of gay posters to cheer you up. Have you been immunised? <laughs> Keep death off the roads. Lock up your medicine chest. Very pleasant. <laughs> Silly makes a change in record covers. Ah, <laughs> oh dear. 
Ah, there's my favourite. Drink a pint of milk a day. Drink a pint of milk a day. <laughs> Drink a pint of milk a day. <laughs> Coughs and sneezes spread diseases. <laughs> Coughs and sneezes spread diseases. Trap the germs in your handkerchief. Coughs and sneezes spread disease. Are you all right? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, hello. Yes, I didn't see you come back. I felt rather lonely sitting here by myself. <laughs> Funny what you do when you're on your own, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know how it is. Uh, just looking at the post, isn't it, sir? Yes. yes. Well, is, uh, is this a normal sort of day for you, then? Do you get many people in normally, or is this uh, normal? It's about average. Oh. You're not, uh, you're not run off your feet, then? Well, I do have other duties to attend to. Oh, of course. I mean, I didn't mean anything like that. <laughs> I know nurses. Oh, yes, indeed. I've heard all about them. They're at it all the time. Working. I mean, you know, I mean but working. I mean, it's a vocation. Nursing, I've always said that. One of the highest callings a woman could aspire to. Well, I mean, it's not the money for you, is it? It's strange, you know, really, when you think the different values we place on society. I mean, you take modelling, for instance. Now, just take modelling. You get some skinny bird up in the West End, <laughs> all bones and salt cellars, <laughs> dragging a piece of fur along a platform, 50 quid a week. And there's your lot, dedicated, three years training, humping great trolley loads of mints about all day long. <laughs> it's not right. Now, is it right? There's Adam Faith earning ten times as much as the Prime Minister. Is that right? Is that right? <laughs> I suppose it depends on whether you like Adam Faith and what your politics are. Isn't it? <laughs> I understand you get a cup of tea and a biscuit afterwards. Yes. But no badge. No. They're taking their time in there, aren't they? Everything's all right, I suppose. Yes. Just wondered. I just thought some of the poor devils might pass out at the sight of a needle. I've seen it before. Men built like oak trees, keeling over like saplings in a hurricane. Quite nasty. Needles don't bother you, then? Me? No. I've had too many of them, my dear. I've had the lot. Got arms like pincushions. <laughs> yes, I reckon I've had a syringe full of everything that's going in my time. <laughs> Needles the size of drain pipe, some of them. <laughs> you name it, I've had it. Well, Mr Hancock, doctor is ready for you now. Who, me? Now? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I mean, is there nobody else before me? I mean, no, hurry. Anybody else want to go in first? Well, I... there isn't anybody else. You're the last one. Oh. Yes. Well, this, this is it then. <laughs> Here we go then. <laughs> Over the top. <laughs> What's he like on the needle, this bloke? Is he steady handed? Is... Now, there's nothing to worry about. Is he in a good mood? You'll be quite all right. Dr. McTaggart is an excellent doctor. McTaggart? He's a Scotsman. Oh, well, that's all right. The marvellous doctors, the Scots. Like they're engineers, you know, first rate. It's the porridge, you know. <laughs> Lead on, Macduff. Mr. Hancock. Ah, good morning. It's a bra brick, moonlich, nick. Good morning, mister. It's a bonny wee lassie. You've got there helping hoots, new, and och, and the hai, and the kiba, and the who. Would you mind sitting down there, Mr. Hancock? <laughs> Well, I beg your pardon for lapsing into the vernacular, but the young lady did say you were a Scottish gentleman. Yes, well, we're not all Rob Roy's. <laughs> May I have your card, please? By all means, I'm ready when you ask, Squire. Good. <laughs> I'll hold out your hand, please. Now, this won't hurt. You'll just feel a slight prick on the end of your finger. Oh! <laughs> By the centre, dear, oh dear. Well, that's that. I'll have my cup of tea and my biscuit now. Well, oh, nothing to it, is there, really? I can't understand why everybody doesn't do it. Well, I'll bid you good day. Thanks very much. Whenever you want any more, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Now, where are you going? Have me tea and biscuits. <laughs> I thought you came here to give some of your blood. You've just had it. <laughs> this is just a smear. It may be just a smear to you, mate, but it's life and death to some poor wretch. <laughs> no, no, no. I've just taken a small sample to test. A sample? How much do you want, then? Well, a, a pint, of course. A pint? <laughs> Have you gone raving now? <laughs> oh, well, of course. I mean, you must be joking. 
A pint is a perfectly normal quantity to take. You don't seriously expect me to believe that. I mean, I came in here in all good faith to help me country. I don't mind giving a reasonable amount, but a pint? Well, that's very nearly an armful. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not walking about with an empty arm for anybody. I mean, after all, <laughs> a joke's a joke. And uh, Mr. You... Hancock, obviously you don't know very much about the workings of the human body. You won't have an empty arm or an empty anything. <laughs> blood is circulating all the time. Normal, healthy individual can give a pint of blood without any ill effects whatsoever. You do have eight pints, you know. Now, look, chum, everybody do his own trade, I grant you. But if I've got eight pints, obviously I need eight pints, and not seven, as I will have by the time you've finished with me. No, I'm sorry, I've been misinformed. I've made a mistake. I'll do something else. I'll be a traffic warden. Oh. <laughs> well, of course, I can't force you to donate your blood, but it's a great shame. You're AB negative. Is that bad? Oh, no, no. You're rhesus positive. Rhesus? <laughs> They're monkeys, aren't they? <laughs> How dare you? What are you implying? I didn't come here to be insulted by a legalised vampire. <laughs> Mr Hancock, that is your blood group. AB negative. It's one of the rarest groups there is. Really? Yes, it is. Very rare indeed. Oh, well, of course, I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I've always felt instinctively I was somehow different from the rest of the herd, you know. <laughs> Something apart. I never fitted into society. I've never belonged, if you know what I mean. The contact was never there. I was always a bit of an outsider. Well, that explains it. AB negative. I'm one of nature's aristocrats. Yes, I really think you ought to reconsider your decision. Yes, well, of course, this does throw a different complexion on the matter. Well, I mean, if I am one of the few sources one doesn't like to hog it all, so to speak, <laughs> I'm not unchristian. Very rare, eh? Yes, and I assure you there'll be no ill effects. I mean, you'll make up the deficiency in no time at all. Oh, well, in that case, I'll do it. I mean, we AB negatives must stick together. A minority group like us, we could be persecuted. Oh, well, thank you very much, <laughs> Mr Hancock. I'm most grateful. Now, if you'd go over to the bed and lie down, it won't take very long. Oh, Afterwards, you'll rest for half an hour and then you're free to go. Ah. Now, just roll up your sleeves. Right. As a matter of interest, what group are you? Group A. <laughs> <laughs> now, this won't hurt. Relax. Go! Oh! oh! Uh, oh. oh, where am I? You're all right. You fainted, that's all. I did not. I was asleep. <laughs> I've been up all night. Oh, well, here's a nice cup of tea for you. Oh, thank you, nurse. A cup of tea, Mr. Thomas? Oh, thank you, nurse. Oh. Mm. Are you all right? Mm. Oh, yes, yes, fine. Yes, nothing to it. What group are you? Group B. What group are you? A, B negative. <laughs> oh, that's very rare. I know, I know. It's a funny thing, this blood business. Yeah, I suppose it is. Yes, it all looks the same, and yet it's all different. Yes, it's very funny stuff, blood. Yes, I don't know where we'd be without it. That's true. That's very true. Where would we be without it? Yes, it's very important, blood. It circulates right round the body, you know. Yes, sir, I believe. Yes, it starts at the heart, it gets pumped right round, goes through the lungs, back into the heart, and round it goes again. What for? What for? I mean, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? I mean... The heart's got to have something to pump round. I mean, there's no point in it banging away all day. <laughs> no point in it banging away all day long for no reason at all. Well, why have a heart, then? Well, if you didn't, the blood wouldn't go round, would it? I mean, it'd all stay in one place. When you stood up, it'd all sink to the bottom of your legs. <laughs> well, it'd be very uncomfortable, wouldn't it? You'd feel as if you were walking about with a boot full of water. <laughs> See, your heart saves you keep having to stand on your head and jumping about to keep it moving. It does it all for you. I still don't see what good blood is, though. Well, look, your body's full of veins, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you've got to fill them up with something, haven't you? <laughs> oh, I see. Are you a doctor, then? Well, no, not really. I never really bothered. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Anything else troubling you? Any aches and pains? No, no, no. Ah, mm. oh, well, that's the main thing, isn't it? Yes, as long as you've got your health. Nothing else matters, really, does it? No, it does not. And the funny thing is, you know, you never appreciate it till you haven't got it anymore. Yes. Some people take the health for granted, don't they? Do you know that could have been me talking? You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> yes, if you haven't got your health, you haven't got anything. You should never abuse it, should you? You should not do. You can say that again. It's one thing you should not do. Abuse your health. Some people look after their cars better than they look after themselves. Well, there you are. You've said it, haven't you? The most precious thing they have and the most neglected. Well, they'll get it in the long run. When they're ill, they'll realise when it's too late. Mind you, they do some marvellous things these days. Oh, yes, it's advanced a lot, medical science. I was glad to see the back of those leeches. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was the turning point. I mean, look at the things they can do these days. New blood, plastic bones, false teeth, glasses, wigs. Do you know, there's some people walking about with hardly anything they started out with. <laughs> Yes, what would we do without doctors, eh? Yes, or, conversely, what would they do without us? That's true. That's very shrewd. But the main thing is, look after yourself. You look after your body, and your body will look after you. That's very wise. <laughs> I mean, of course, the Greeks knew all about this years ago. Did they really? Yes! Oh, very advanced people, the Greeks, where they had hot and cold water and drains, always washing themselves they were. Of course, it all got lost in the wars. When Mussolini moved in. <laughs> no, no, before him, surely. Wasn't it? Yes, they taught it to the Romans, and the Romans came over here, and... and the... Well, of course, you can always learn from other people. Well, of course you can. That's why I'm in favour of the common market. Can't ignore the rest of the world. That's true. That's very true. Can't go through life with your head buried in the sand. No man is an island. You're right there. <laughs> I agree. Necessity is the mother of invention. It certainly is. Life would be intolerable if we knew everything. I should say it would. My goodness, yes. Let the shipwrecks of others be your sea marks. <laughs> For things unknown, there is no desire. Well, exactly. <laughs> and then again, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. <laughs> it is indeed. Do you like wine gums? Oh, thank you very much. Don't take the black one. No, all right. Of course, they do a tube with all black ones now, you know. I know, but you can't always get them. Well, that's the way it goes. Still, as long as we've got our health. Yes, that's the main thing. Yes, that's the main thing. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, indeed. Well, I think I'm ready now. Oh, you're off then? Yes, out into the big world. Yeah. Do you live far? No, just up the road. You'll get a bus then, will you? No, nah. I think I'll walk. You haven't got far to go, then? No, just up the road. Well, it's not worth it, then, is it? Rich? Not really. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say cheerio, then. Yes, cheerio. Look after yourself. Yes, and you. I will. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I won't. Well, cheerio, then. <laughs> Mine, there you go. See you on the ice. <laughs> yes, nice man, that. Very nice man. Very intelligent. <laughs> Good conversationalist. <laughs> Cut above the type you meet down the pub. A very nice man. He's walked off with my wine gum. <laughs> I only broke them open for him. Oh, what's the use? If you can't trust blood donors, who can you trust? <laughs> oh, hey, hey! Nurse, what about some more tea down here? You've had me blood, it's not asking for much, is it, really? And two spoonfuls of brown sugar. Oh, dear. Oh, no, oh, I'll have one at home. Hello. South London General. Dr. McTaggart, please. Blood donor department. Hello, Dr. Hancock here. Yes, it is me again. Has it gone yet? Have you used it? Me blood? Well, you've had it for 24 hours now. You said it was rare. Surely somebody must be after it. Well, of course it's got something to do with me. It's my blood. Well, all right, was. But you can't expect my interest in it to cease just because you've got it. Well, it's a waste of time giving it if it's only just going to lay about in a bottle for years. I wish to make sure it goes to the right sort of person. 
I wouldn't like to think of any old hobbledehoy having my blood coursing through his veins. Well, really, I never thought I'd hear that sort of language from a doctor. Have you been at the meths again? <laughs> Control yourself, sir. There might be nurses listening. Civility costs nothing, my man. I shall phone when I like. I shall phone tomorrow and the day after and the day after that and every day until my blood is used. Good day to you. God, what a way to speak to a blood donor. If I have any more of his old buck, I shall go straight to the hospital management committee and have his license taken away. I think it's reasonable to want to know where your life's blood has gone to, especially a rare group like mine. Oh, I think I'll cut myself a sandwich. Got to get my strength back. A pint of blood takes some making up. Oh, this bread knife's useless. You couldn't get through half a pound of butter with this. Where's that sharpener? Oh, oh. Oh. Knife wound, eh? Hmm. Teddy boy, is he? No, I don't think so. <laughs> His landlady found him, cut himself with a bread knife and fainted. He lost a lot of blood, I see. Yes. Oh, we'll have to give him a transfusion. He had his blood donor's card on him. He's group AB negative. Hmm, really? Well, that's very rare. Have we got any? <coughs> yes, we've got just one pint in stock. Good. Uh, <laughs> get it, will you, nurse? Well, you're going to be all right, old man. We're going to give you a transfusion. I'm a very rare blood group, you know. Yes, yes, we know. We've got just one pint of your group in stock. You ought to have that. Uh, who wants the pint of AB negative? Uh, over here. Oh, no, it's not for him. Why? <laughs> well, he only gave it yesterday. <laughs> a waste of time, wasn't it? Well, I'd have been in a right state if I hadn't. There's nothing else here for me. Least I know it's going to the right sort of person. These blood banks, they're like ordinary banks, really. Put it in when you're flush, draw it out when you need it. <laughs> Come on, bang it in, I'm getting dizzy. I'll let you have it back later on. What's on the menu tonight, nurse? Have you got any mints? I like mints, particularly hospital mints. <laughs> 